Like that glitch text effect? Let's see how to do it in Resolve. Okay guys, let's go into the uh, tutorial for the glitch text effect. First thing you want to do is create a text title. I'm just going to make this about, let's see, about a, a minute long. And then you're going to go ahead, I'm just going to call it glitch. I'm going to change the font to, let's go with that. Works, let's make it a little bigger, okay? All right, so after this, you want to go ahead into the color section. And in this case, you see that there's no option for you to edit the text title. So what we need to do is to right click on this, change it to a compound clip. Okay. Now when we go back inside, there it is. So we're going to need uh, up to three nodes here, so I'm just going to go ahead and create those here. Now the first one I'm just going to call it JPEG Damage. Okay, so we're going to go in here to the Open Effects uh, section and we're going to take the JPEG Damage. We're going to drag that in. Now what we want to do here is set up a dynamic keyframe. So I'm going to turn that on and what I wanted to do is roughly five keyframes in from the beginning I want it to start to shake okay or right before that I want it to peak at the shake all right so I'm gonna come in here and change the resolution to uh, 30 and then what I'm gonna do is go back to the first one and actually change that back to, uh, to a, a one and then about let's see one two three four I don't know four or five from the midpoint there I'm going to also turn it back down to one so that it's off okay so now what we want to do here is put this on loop and let's see how that looks just with that one uh, open effects node all right so so you can kind of see the glitch effects uh, there that looks pretty good now the next thing we want to do is perhaps uh, we would want to add a little RGB color okay so we're gonna come in here and do prism blur we're gonna pick that open effects and put that into the second node go ahead and label it prism blur okay so for this one we're, we're gonna do the same thing as we did before turn on dynamic keyframing I'm gonna go here at the midpoint which is roughly four or five, or actually five keyframes in from the edge of the clip. And I'm going to go in here and turn the X position to minus five, minus 0.5 that is, the Y position to minus 0.5. Actually, so we can see this a little better, I'm going to turn off that node so you can kind of see the effect that's it's doing there and then the aberration distance I'm going to change this to point two all right so you can see the effect that it's having on the overall uh, function and I'm going to change this to say one so now it really uh, adds uh, with the strength there so uh, just like we did with the previous um, effect I'm going to go to the beginning here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop this down so that it uh, turns it off. So all I need to do is actually turn off the uh, aberration distance, and I'm also going to do this at the end, aberration distance. So since it's a dynamic keyframe, it kind of ramps it up to here in a peak in the middle, and then it ramps it back down. So let's take a look and see what that looks like. All right, so that's just for the prism blur now when we add the jpeg damage all right so that looks pretty good maybe a little too much on the uh the color so let's drop this down the strength down a little bit 
Let's try it like that. Yeah, just enough to really give that glitchy effect. Okay. The last thing we're going to do is what's known as the shake, the camera shake. So that really uh, is what sells the the effect here. So I'm going to turn these other two off just so that we can focus on the camera shake here. Okay. So just like the previous three, we're going to go ahead and turn on dynamic keyframing here. We're going to go to the middle. I'm going to begin to uh, change the parameters. So for this, I'm going to set the uh, motion scale all the way up to 2. We're going to set the speed scale up to 2. And motion blur roughly 0.3 uh, is what I saw worked really well. Pan amplitude, we're going to set that to 1. Tilt amplitude, also 1. Uh, we're not going to deal with rotation. PTR speed, we're going to set leave that at 0.5, but... Uh, we can adjust that if we need to later for the effect. Zoom amp amplitude, I'm going to set that to 1. Uh, zoom speed, I'm going to dial that up to 2. Zoom type, I want it both outward and inward. Okay. And then uh, the shake quality in general, you know, the defaults are fine. I personally like rectified sign, um, and that's what I use. So we're going to stick with that, and uh, that's it. So what we want to do is we've got that dialed in here in the middle and so we're going to go back to the beginning and we're going to uh, turn off the main settings that control the effects so we're just going to uh, turn off the motion scale uh, the speed and the blur we're going to do the same thing here at the end motion speed blur all right, so let's take a look and see how that looks just with the camera shake. Okay, so yeah, I think that works. Now if we add the JPEG damage in, let's see what that looks like. All right, and then we're going to add the prism blur. All right, so you've got all uh, three of the open FX uh, tools working together, and uh, we can get the glitch te text effect there. Let's go ahead and add a little sound here, a little glitchy sound. Let's see how this looks now. If I go back to the beginning and we'll loop this. All right, that looks good. If you need some of the glitch sounds, I'll leave a link below. If you've got any questions, just leave them in the comments below. Otherwise, uh, please like and subscribe if you haven't already joined the channel. Peace.